Because as we touched on last night, the U.S. finalizing a deal to temporarily ease sanctions on Venezuela. Under the six-month plan, the U.S. will permit Venezuela to sell its oil to our and other markets. In return, Venezuela gives assurances that it will hold more free and fair elections next year. Now, Venezuela is in dire straits. The nation used to produce 3 million barrels of oil per day. That is now down to about 700,000 barrels, basically one big ship per day. The country's energy infrastructure is a disaster, and the need for American and Western capital to keep it just operating at current levels is tremendous. Under this plan, Venezuela could begin to ramp up oil sales immediately, likely just around 200,000 barrels per day, but one State Department official telling me last night, because this is their deal, not energy, this is state, that they believe that could become about 500,000 barrels per day of new Venezuelan oil on the market by next summer. Now, in the grand scheme, that is still not a lot. In fact, 500,000 barrels a day is just about one half of 1% of global oil production. But it could help ease supply country, or crunches rather, specifically for diesel fuel which is what Venezuela's heavy oil is primarily used for. So let's talk more about this deal and what it might mean or not mean with Dan Pickering, the founder and CIO of Pickering Energy Partners. Dan, good to have you on. Your reaction to this deal to ease sanctions on Venezuela. Brian, I think that I'd characterize the U.S. right now as looking for any relief valves they can find as the Middle East situation potentially escalates. Uh, a couple hundred thousand barrels a day, you said it, it's not much. I don't believe the 500,000 barrels a day by next year. I think Venezuela's systems atrophied a lot. And so I think the bottom line is, is uh, this is a, a red herring to make people feel better, but unlikely to meaningfully change the market. So we'd have to get in the heads of the people who actually did the deal. And by the way, there are some positives. If Venezuela can at least ease its poverty by having a little more oil revenue that at some point, hopefully would actually go to the people rather than just sort of the regime that's in charge, uh, that could be a positive thing. But it doesn't sound like, Dan, for the U.S. oil market, specifically diesel fuel, diesel fuel is about 80 to 80 cents to a dollar per gallon more expensive than regular unleaded. This is going to make that much of a difference. I, I don't think it does. Um, you know, sure, we get a little bit more uh, of the kind of crude that we refine. But, uh, you know, the question is also, how long does this stay in place? Um, we were, we're making things easier. Do we make things harder when it's convenient for us? So I think it's just hard to trust right now. Um, we'll need everything we can get from everywhere we can yeah. get it if the Middle East situation gets worse. Well, particularly if we lose barrels, say, from Iran. Iran Iranian exports and foreign currency reserves have soared even under sanctions, if the sanctions are either reinforced or enforced a little more, you know, stringently, then perhaps, even though it's a different kind of oil, Dan, I, I know that one's better than the other one. This one, Venezuela is like literally looks like mud. Could that be a benefit if we lose Iranian barrels? Well, we talked about this when the when the Middle East crisis kicked off. Um, if we lose Middle East barrels, if we lose Iranian barrels, if we lose Saudi barrels. Um, if there's a problem in the Middle East, there's no relief valve big enough. Mm -hmm. um, 15 million barrels a day go through the Straits of Hormuz. The Middle East is th 30 million barrels a day or 30 percent of total supply. And so, um, again, I think that it's optionality, mm -hmm. but I don't know that I don't know that it's an answer. And yeah. so the, the real answer is we got to really be careful about what's happening in the Middle East and, uh, you know, hope that we don't have to tap our SPR for strategic purposes as opposed to price purposes.